have a very bad attitude. I had a child before I was married. I am a divorcee, but I never have an amazing husband. Um, I have a good family. And so I don't want you to see my accomplishments and my accolades and think that you can't relate to me because I have been through things. And so I want you to know that amongst all those failures, I am still human. So I'm never going to say anything about my accomplishments because I do have a lot of them, praise God. But that's not, I want you to know that I'm human. So um, I had a plan, but God's plan is always supreme. And so um, just bear with me. And I'm a millennial, so just so you don't know, I'm going to read from the Message Bible because I want it to be relatable. I believe in the deeds of thou and the days, but I also want you to understand what I'm saying. So when you leave it, it'll play in your mind. And it, it is good food to you, okay? All right, so I want to start by saying, um, if you could put the other picture of the line that you had first before this one, then we'll go there. Um, as I was sitting there in the back, um, when you stood up and you yelled out, um, I immediately heard the spirit say, um, the lions are coming. And so, um, again, I'm going to make a lot of child references because God is taking me back to a place of simplicity. I have small children, so I watch a lot of kid movies. I read a lot of kid books, and those things are coming alive in my life. And so when I heard God say that the lions are coming, if you remember in Lion King, whenever the lion showed up, that meant business. That meant something was changing. And so when you stood up and you roared, heaven heard it. And then you said, God doesn't do anything so hard. The lions are really coming. Hallelujah. Which means even though the scripture says that the laborers are few, we just learned this past week, the laborers we learned few, they're just lazy. Mm. They're in a stupor, they're in a sleeping place. And so I just decree and declare over this house that as the lions come, that you stand up in your place and know what you're sent here to do. Because if you're here to me, you were sent, you have purpose. In 27 years, like my mom said, putting up with us, y'all gonna be real transparent. My parents and I went through a real hard time. And so I was working at Burger King, and Pastor Simmons and Sister Shella would come and check on me, but they really got on my nerves. Like, don't keep on checking with me. <laughs> and so they came one day, and I saw them come, and I saw my manager. I was like, Ugh. And I hear from them. But Sister Shella was like, I see you. <laughs> you ain't got to hide from me. I see you. Y'all I'm like, tell them I'm here. Tell them I'm here. And Pastor Simmons was like, Shella, let it go, really, just let it go. And she was like, no, Joe, I see you. <laughs> and I'm like, 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 I'm
but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we have not been broken. What, what they did to Jesus, they do to us. Trial and torture, mockery and murder. What Jesus did among, among them, he does in us. He lives. Our lives are a constant risk for Jesus' sake, which makes Jesus' life all the more evident in us. While we're going through the worst, you're getting on. You're getting in on the best. I'm going to read that one again. While you're going through the work, while we're going through the worst, you're getting in on the best. I didn't make a video either, but this is my video. Y'all stand up. And I get to go along. I am a mother's child. While we're going through the worst, you're getting in on the best. From their perspective, while we're going through the worst, while we're praying for y'all, y'all bullheaded, you're not listening, you're not showing up, you're not committed, you're getting in on the best. I'm still studying my word, I'm still feeding you. And I'm gonna be honest with you, there are not many pastors who are as genuine and loving and kind. Do you hear me? Genuine. They have cultivated a culture of genuineness. Leaders that are personable. You don't have to go through an admin assistant. You don't have to go through a buffer. You have their phone number. You're welcome in their homes. They will come to your homes. They don't make leaders like that anymore. And to serve for 27 years? that you call her to be God. I thank you that you unique, uniquely set 
him here in the middle of East Gas tonight. So I thank you, God, that the plan to go out and win the city is still the same, God, and that you're sending labor to understand the mission, God. I bless them, God. A thousand fold. There'll be no lack in their homes, God. Anything that they have need and desire of God, you're giving it to them, God. And I just be rest in this season. And I thank you for rejuvenating their joy, God. Learning how to laugh again. Learning how to relax again, God. I thank you that you're restoring them now. In Jesus' name we pray. And we agree by saying amen. 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 Okay, now you can put my other picture. So, um, this, um, he's going to put another picture. It's a picture of Pastor Simmons out in his garden. And so, for years, we live now with <laughs> Pastor Simmons and Sister Shella. And not only is he um, really, really good with the dogs, but the garden was his passion. And um, he would drag all of us out there. If you were at home, you were working. <laughs> and if you weren't working, you would get a Sunday school lesson. <laughs> And so, um, I want to go to Matthew 13. Um, and we'll start at verse 3. And remember, we're going to read from the Message Bible. It says, what do you make of this? A farmer planted seed. As he scattered the seed, some of it fell on the road, and birds ate it. Some fell in the gravel, it sprouted quickly, but didn't put down roots. So when the sun came up, it withered just as quickly. Some fell in the weeds, as it came up, it was strangled by the weeds. Some fell on good earth, and produced a harvest beyond his wildest dreams. Are you listening to this? Really listening. And then we'll drop down to verse 18. And it says, Study the story of the farmer planting seed. When anyone hears news of the kingdom and doesn't take it in, it just remains on the surface. So the evil one comes along and plucks it right out of that person's heart. This is the seed the farmer scatters on the road. The seed cast in the gravel, this is the person who hears and instantly responds with enthusiasm. But there is no soil of character. And so when the emotions wear off and some difficulty arrives, there is nothing to show for it. The seed cast in the weeds is the person who hears the kingdom news. But weeds of worry and illusions about getting more and wanting everything under the sun strangle what was heard and nothing comes of it. The seed cast on good earth is the person who hears and takes in the news and then produces a harvest beyond his wildest dreams. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity. God, I submit myself to you. I have no education that is higher than what heaven can say. So I fully and wholly and completely say, God, come and be God. You know what your people need to hear, Father. And I thank you that my ear is inclined to heaven to say exactly what it is that you desire to say. God, we bless this word. Let us not only be hearers, God, but activate us to be doers, God, to know where we stand in the kingdom, God. Thank you for being such a revel revelation provider, God. To break your word alive in our hearts, God. Because if we had it in our hearts, we may not sin against it, God. And for that, we give you glory and praise in your name. Amen. So if I had to take a title, it would be, What Kind of Digging Power Do You Need? All right. So in this scripture, we love to really relate and talk about naming our seed. You know, hey, put a seed in your hand. Name it, tag it, name it, tag it. And I thoroughly believe in the principle. But today, I want to talk about what kind of ground you have. That way, you'll know what type of tool is needed for the ground that you have. So I want you to remember these three points. The soil represents your response to the word. How are you responding once the word is given to you? Are you shrugging it off? Are you taking it in? Are you listening? Are you embedding it in your heart? Is it sticking with you throughout the week? Or are you leaving out of here forgetting everything that was said? The seed represents the gospel which is the actual word. The sower represents the laborer or the gardener. Okay, remember that part. All right, so I want to talk about two different types of tools. And so this picture of Pastor Simmons out in the garden is really what prompted me to this. When I kept saying, okay, God, tell me what you want me to talk about. Tell me what you want me to talk about. And if you've ever ministered, you know God is like, 
I'm gonna tell you when I'm ready, because if I let you get in your analytical mind, you're gonna start saying what you wanna say. So I was patient, he spoke. So I wanna talk about the tiller and the cultivator. And that's the sin as being a gardener, he probably knows the difference immediately. But the tiller is used to break up compact, hard soil. It is usually gas powered, or you can get an electrical one, but it's better to have a gas powered one. And it works greater in larger areas. Areas. The cultivator is responsible for cultivating the soil of an existing planting area, which means something has already been planted there. It's not having to go through and do the initial work. It helps to maintain the looseness of previously worked soil, and it works better in smaller areas. So again, what kind of digging power do you need? Are you out saying, hey, I need a tiller because I think I just got all this going on. I got such a big space. And you think my heart is, my heart is pure, my hands are clean. But then God is saying, you know what? You're not even ready for the cultivator because sometimes we get to a place that I want to cultivate this culture. I want to have this going on. But God is saying, no, we need to go back to the tiller. We got to break up this fellow ground. We got to get that hatred out your heart. We got to get that malice out your heart. We got to get that evil intent out your heart. We got to close your mouth because sometimes your mouth moving faster than what I'm telling you. So we think, there again, what type of digging power do you need? Are you really at a place to where God can cultivate some things in you to where you, you're not saying things you're not supposed to say? You're not doing things you're not supposed to do? And I'm not just talking about when somebody is watching. I'm talking about character. I'm talking about when you by yourself and you having to make some decisions between right and wrong, what they say to little people on your shoulder. You having them conversations like, I really want to snap on you, but no, we're not going to do that today. So what kind of digging power do you need? What, what kind of soil are you, what kind of soil are you harvesting? What do you have? Because we got to remember, if the soil is cultivated, it's already broken up and it's ready for seed. But we read in the scripture that some of it did fall on good ground, which means what? They were using a cultivator. They really should have been tilling, breaking the ground up because if the ground hasn't been broken up, the seed can't be received. All right, all right. And it's okay if we still at the tiller stage because I'm very much in the tiller stage. Like, I break it all up. Get it all out because I haven't arrived. Amen? So the cultivator and the tiller both have something called a time. The time is the centralized component, the rotating metal blades that dig into the soil. The times are sharp on the edge. And this just reminds me of the scripture in Hebrews when he talks about that two-edged sword. So if you put up the front time, the picture of the front time for me. So as he um, prepares this picture, and I really wanted you to see it so you can kind of get it in your mind. And I'm a little extra. I almost bought one, but I figured my husband would be like, why do you have this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so the front time tiller, um, you can put it on all the screens and cover me up if you want to, if that's possible. So the front time tiller, if you'll notice, has the blades on the front. Okay? So our front time tiller pushes forward with the time in the front. Philippians 3 and 14 says that we press forward toward the mark. And I'm actually going to read this um, in the message version again. I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have made it, but I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong, by no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eyes on a goal, where God is beckoning us onward towards Jesus. I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. So the way that this front time tiller works is it pushes forward. It's not moving any soil backwards. It's not doing anything left or right. It's just moving forward. And some of us are in a place where we need that tiller to do what? Move us forward. We're so worried about what's going on behind us. Now our past is relevant, but I think at some point we got to move forward and ask for some healing, ask for some restoration. God, show me what my goal is. Because remember, the scripture says what? Forward. I press forward towards the mark. And then in Philippians it says, I'm not turning back. I'm off and I'm running. 
I'm off and I'm running. Remember, if he writes the vision and make it plan, we're going to read it and we're going to what? Run. Okay, all the scriptures making sense, so we, we don't really have a good excuse after this. All right. Um, and remember that we're better together. First Corinthians 12, 1 says that we are one body, many parts. And according to Ephesians 4, everybody has a function. You fit in there somewhere. Amen. So the real time tiller, can you show that picture? So the real time tiller you see is just the opposite. It has the, there you go, Pastor Simmons, tell me preach. <laughs> the real time tiller has your blades on the back half of the device, okay? So the real time tiller is needed to break up new ground. The tiller also has a real time function that allows the time to turn opposite directions of its wheel, resulting in stronger tilling actions. So I did tell you that one, one thing about both of them, whether it's rear or forward, is that they have a centralized time. What does God call himself? The chief what? Cornerstone. Centralized component. So they all do the same thing once they have that centralized component, but it just depends on what kind of digging power you need. So as it's going backwards, what is it doing? It's pushing the dirt in opposite directions. What is it doing? That centralized component, and we'll use Pastor Simmons and Sashella, they are the centralized components. And it says that they can go in opposite directions. Are you ready to be sent? Are you at a place to where if they said, hey, I need you to go and do this, or I need you to go and do that, is your ground at a place to where they can trust it to be sent? That's what their rear time till it does. It goes and says, okay, a heart check. Am I, where I, am I where I need to be to be sent to do that, the work of the Lord? Because one thing my pastor tells us, and shout out to my pastors. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Amen. Pastor Steve and Pastor Rita. But one thing they always tell us is, if I see you, you got to do more than just go. If I came here and I didn't have myself together, it's not only a reflection of them, but it's a reflection of them and my parents. Because I started here, this is my foundation. So you got to make sure that your soil is in good condition. What kind of digging power do you need? Really assessing and being honest with yourself. And I want to segue here. If you tell me, hey, I'm ready, I'm ready, I need the cultivator, bring it out here. And I get out there and we need a tiller, guess what? If I'm a contractor, then you owe me some more money because I got to go back. I got to get what you really need, and I got to come back again. Do you know how God feels when you tell him, God, I'm ready, put me on front street? Now, he already know, but because he gives us a matter of choice and he holds us accountable, God, I'm ready. And then you get out here on front street, and you turn into Joel's wife. Not Joel, but Joel's wife. You ready to curse God or not? But you said, I'm ready, though. You said, bring, bring the cultivator, because I'm past the tiller, God. I don't have nothing that needs to be broke up. I'm right where I need to be. I'm being obedient. I'm walking in purpose. I'm speaking well. And then he get there, he's like, no. No. You're not ready for that yet. And so it's about self-assessment. Self-assessment. And y'all, I'm this word was so good to me, I was literally... 11 or 12 o'clock at night, like, okay, God, I'm so sorry for this. I'm so sorry for that. And then I said this, and then I did that, and then I think I might have did that too. But when you get to a place where you can be in a place of repentance without having somebody else to come to you and tell you, hey, I noticed this or I saw this, because when God becomes real to you for you, when a relationship becomes real to you for you, conviction is real. Conviction is real. And it causes you to say, you know what, I, I shouldn't have said or did that. And you you okay with going back and saying, you know what, I made a mistake. I was wrong. And I'm not just apologizing so I can be let off the hook and it looks good. Because sometimes apologies look good. We want people to say, oh, she did apologize. But you didn't mean it. But God knows the matters of the heart. He knows what your soul looks like. He knows. He knows. And sometimes we'll can't see. And I'm guilty. We'll cast seed and we wait. Oh, God, I know you're going to do it. I know you're going to do it. I know you're going to do it. And you know what God said? I know you need to do it. <laughs> I know you need to do it. 
And the whole time, I'm just, I got people pray, uh, fasting and praying because some things only come by uh, prayer and fasting. And so we think we're doing real good when we start fasting and praying. But the whole time, God's like, I ain't hearing none of that. Because your heart is wicked. Your thoughts are impure. That self-evaluation not taking place. You're not being honest with yourself because you can lie real good to people. But that self-evaluation, being able to say, you know what, God, I submit wholly and completely. Who I am now is not who I know I'm meant to be. So help me to get into a place where I can be exactly who you said I'm supposed to be. Because you know me better than I know myself. We have to forget those things that were behind. You cannot put old wine in new wine skin. This machine needs to dig down deep. It tears into roots. So if you're using the real time, Tilly, you're saying, well, I'm going to root every generational curse. Everything that's on my bloodline is not like you. That's the only real, that's the only real reason we need to be going behind is to unroot some things. So if you need the real time, Tilly, you're saying, guess what? I'm submitting whole and completely, and I'm coming clean. Because sometimes we hold ourselves hostage. We embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? This happened to me, and, and I feel so down and bad about it. God is like, I've already forgiven you for that. I've already moved you beyond that. Go back and uproot those things that are in your family. I know there are some things on my children, my children's family and my family. I don't want my children to possess those things. Spirit of depression, spirit of poverty. I'm gonna get my real time filling, and I'm plucking those seeds up. I'm digging deep, and sometimes we do surface work. Who here do surface work, or is it just me? You do surface work. I, I stop saying this, and I stop saying that. I'm doing so good. That's surface work. You know what I'm saying? Or for women, we get us a new hairdo or a new lipstick. I'm doing so much better. But you ain't digging deep. You ain't saying, I learned how to forgive. I mean, and truly forgive. This led other people out of jail when you should be there. You know what I'm saying? Digging deep, being able to say, I know what you've called me to do, God, and I submit to that. And I keep saying that because that's what it takes in order for the lions to come and work to heaven, submit wholly and completely to what he wants us to do, being in our purpose. When feeling the tiller for use. It is important not to mix gas and oil. Excess gas and oil can produce a smoky exhaust. Uh, it causes the muffler to leak and sometimes it loses power. So, <laughs> you got to be careful what company you keep. What are you mixing with? Because here it says, sometimes it could, it could cause loss of power and exhaust. I hear a lot of Christians now saying, I'm just exhausted with the church. What you mixing with? What you mixing with? If it calls for pure oil, and oil has to go through a pressing, how did oil and gas get in the sun? How did the wheat and the tear start growing together? That's it. How are you exhausted when you said, I come that you may have a life and have life more abundantly? How are you exhausted when he said the joy of the Lord is your strength? How are you exhausted when Psalms 23, Psalms 91, Psalms 105 is very much, how are you exhausted? How are you in a stupor? Stupor means you sleep, your head Hell damn, how? How? How are you exhausted? When you mix too much gas and oil, you got a problem, right, Pastor Sanders? You're going to choke it out. So here you are planting the seeds, thinking you're doing a good thing, but you're going to choke out your seed. So how am I believing for my whole family to be saved, but I'm mad at sister so-and-so, and I don't care that her son is, is still not saved, and I ain't worried about how. I planted my seed hoping that it's good. I threw it in. Okay, it fell on good ground. Girl, I don't really care if her son ever come to church. I, don't, I ain't worried about it. 
the devil is a lie. I'm expecting every person connected to me to be saved. Yes. And so, you know what I'm doing? I'm checking my mouth. Yes. Yes. Sometimes, it ain't even just your hands, because we like to think that it's our hands that's clean, and our heart can be far from it. We plant the seed, we throw it, we think we did good. Our hands are clean, but our heart is not. And it makes a difference. It makes, it makes, it makes, and you can name the seed whatever you want to say. Right now, I'm manifesting a million dollars in my life. Sustainable wealth. And I'm not talking about a million where I got to pay bills. I'm talking about the kind that is it's a million just sitting there. You see what I'm saying? But in the process of getting to that million, I got to make sure that I'm walking upright before Christ because he ain't giving me nothing if I'm going to be nasty. Come on, come on. If I'm not willing to be a blessing. Because you better believe he gives seed to the sower, but when he gives it to you, how are you sowing it? What kind of digging power do you need? What kind of digging power do you need? Not having enough oil can also <laughs> destroy the unit. So here we are. We think, okay, we got enough in here, and we just gonna roll with it. Roll with. Roxana uh, ministered a message yesterday, and she was all in myself. You know, when you hate to go hear somebody else, it's like she gonna think of God here, but God just that good. <laughs> he, he's speaking the same thing. And so she talked about the wise virgins and their oil, and how five of them didn't have no oil, and they went trying to run to the store real quick, and I'm paraphrasing to get their oil. And they missed it. They locked the door. They shut the door. So we got this time that we put just enough oil in here. Okay, I'm not mixing nothing with it. I'm doing real good. I'm just going to put just enough in here. I'm not going to exhaust all my resources. I'm just going to put just enough oil. This is enough right here just to get me through. This is just enough. This is just enough. And if you don't put enough, you're still in a bad situation. How much oil do you have in your lamp? Is it enough oil that's going to cause the lamp to be illuminated? Is your light even going to shine at all? Do you even have enough to where when you get to the door, is your sacrifice enough to where when, the, let, me, let me go back. Oil comes from an olive. It has to be heated to a certain temperature. Very strategic. Overheated, you may still be starting off. But then it has to go through a press. There again, very strategic. You press it too much, you do it too long, you mess up, you start over. Follow me. When the oil comes from that olive, it is pure, it is virgin. It has, it has a really high price to it when it's where it's supposed to be. But what happens when you get in the press and you jump out too fast? When you had the ability to produce this much oil, but you jumped out, so now you got this much, and you mad at everybody else. Because you got to start over. Because God is not a God that, that does Mario Kart where you can learn a cheat sheet and you jump to the next level. That ain't who God is. Come on. Come on. Come on. He holding you accountable. Every round, it does go higher and higher, but are you ready to ascend? Are you ready to go? Do you have enough oil that if you went to the door and that was your admission, you can move forward? Or would you still have to move to the back of the line? In this season, in this time, in this dispensation, God is looking for oil. I'm talking about pure authentic. You know how you can buy some um, great value? Yeah, my dad is bad about this. My mom would be like, I just grabbed some. I mean, I just, I just, I don't need no great value. I want the real stew. I mean, and he passed about it. It could be 10, 11 o'clock at night. He getting up. <laughs> you want to get the real stuff. Or do you have a knockoff? Is your oil knockoff? Because you can get, uh, what is it, palm olives, the real good kind, the palm kind. That, you know the kind your mama used to put to run down and you smell like oil all day. You can get that kind. Or, you know, now the new generation, they got, oh, it's organic. It's amazing. Ain't got no power in it. <laughs> Ain't got no power in it. It's dry for you to get out the house. My mom used to, yeah, all day, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> My friends were like, you're crossing on your head. <laughs> I just be dabbing. <laughs> but what kind of oil do you have? Because he checking it. He, he the quality 
quality checker. You know how they at points they have the QA control people. He the quality checker. He gonna check the quality of the oil. Will it pass the inspection? That's where I'm at in life. God, will my oil pass the inspection? Because even if I could share with one of the virgins who needed it, is it even worth it for them? Because they're going to be real upset if I share my oil, they get to the door and it's suspected and we all fail. You know, it's like the copy of your friend says, and then you look like, how we get a D? <laughs> Somebody been elevated, all of a sudden, I feel no, no. <laughs> Stay where you at. Check your ground. Check your oil. Because the quality control checker, <laughs> he will humble you. Do you hear me? He will humble you. Are y'all getting something from this? Yeah. All right. So Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says, here are six things. God hates, and one more that he loves with a passion. Eyes that are arrogant, a tongue that lies, hands that murder the innocent, a heart that hatches evil plots, feet that, that breaks down a wicked track, a mouth that lies under oath, a troublemaker in the family. I'm going to tell you all the fun and real quick. So we were going over the scripture. It was me and a couple of other people. <laughs> And so we got to the part where it says, hands that murder the innocent. I ain't never murder nobody, so I know I'm good on that. We were just talking about things that we know we're not doing. You know, it, it feels good to check things off your list that you know you're not doing. And so I said, well, you may not have murdered anybody in the natural, but who have you murdered in the spirit? I about got put out of Bible study, y'all. <laughs> I said, we got to be honest with the word, because see, the word is left for interpretation. It's, it's for your own conviction. Who are you murdering in the spirit realm when you cutting them down? You're not being encouraging. I see you, but I'm not going to speak. I'm not interested in working with you. Who are you murdering in the spirit? What, what are you saying and doing in the spirit? Because in the natural, we love to check things off. But in the spirit realm, what kind of digging power do you really need when you start being honest about the things that you're doing? Amen? Amen. Amen. What is the condition of your soul? Because uh, James Fan said, don't plant anything before next Friday, right? There's another code so now. We all trust James Fan. You can't straight from here like Chick fil A. <laughs> so it said, don't plant nothing until next Friday. There's another code so now. Which tells us that the ground may be too cold to take whatever, whatever it is we're trying to plant. Are you cold? You warm? You lukewarm? You hot? What are you? What kind of soil do you have? And then now they so advanced, they can do a soil sample to tell you, hey, this kind of ground will take this crop and it will harvest. This kind of ground will not. If you put it there, it's not going to work. Have you had a soil sample done? Are you afraid to go to somebody and say, hey, I need to be held accountable. I feel like I might be doing this. Am I doing it? In Psalms, he tells us it's good to have friends. It's good not for you to be alone. You know why? Because two are better than one. Why? And I'm not just talking about in marital relationships. I'm talking about in all instances. Y'all remember, um, and y'all kind of old as so. Yesterday. I think it was a song that was saying something like, no new friends. Right? Am I right? Yeah. No new friends. Jesus said this. Thank you. <laughs> no new friends. No new friends. That was a song. And it was kind of catching and I'm like, no, because I'm leaving it myself. I'm leaving it myself. And that's how it is in the kingdom. We get in our silos, in our boxes. And we box ourselves in, and God can't use us. God can't use us at all. You know why? Because he's calling for a kingdom. He's not calling for one or two. He's calling for a collective effort. That means getting outside and instead of saying, you know what? I'm not afraid to work with somebody else. I'm not afraid. Because let me tell you something. Pastor Simmons has a heart for his gas, and he has said a thousand times, I cannot do this by myself. That's where the exhaust comes from. 
is where the racelessness comes from. Because you cannot do it by yourself. And nobody should be made to do it by themselves. So I'm going to ask again, what kind of digging power do you really need? Being honest with yourself. So I'm going to make a couple of declarations. And I hope that um, in all of this, that when you leave here, you know, hey, my soul is important. There's also a scripture and song saying that you are reaping things that you didn't even have to plan. That means you didn't have to do no work. That means Pastor Simmons can call and say, hey, come get this batch of greens. I already did all the work. You didn't have to buy no tools. You didn't have to check the soil. You didn't have to buy no seed. You didn't have to go out there and work. You didn't have to do nothing. The only thing he asked you to do, get your oil. Get your gas in your car. Come down here and pick up what I did. Now that's the songs. You will reap in fields that you didn't even have to plant. But in order for you to have that kind of access, imagine what it takes for God to look at you and say, Oh, you're doing such an amazing child. You're walking up right before me. When I say get up, you get up. When I say go left, you go left. Okay, so there's a field over here. Come follow me. There's a field. Come up. Come up this way. There's a field over here that is flowing with milk and honey that has more than enough. There will be all of your needs, all your children and their children. And who else? Okay, and them too. And who else you want to ask? You remember Esther? For such a time as this, she just asked and it was granted. You remember David? David wasn't even trying and got elevated. And then he got up there and said, it was acting out. But God found his heart, his soil, to be in good condition to where he said, okay, I'm granting you access. What is it that you need access to that you still don't have? And it's been a long time coming that you're saying, okay, you know what? I know why I don't have access to that now. I know why. So let me work on me. This is a me message. Let me work on me. Let me see how I can get into a place where I can have access granted to get into these places. So I'm going to make these declarations. And then I'm going to pray and I'm going to be done. All right? Every evil grip upon my life, loose your hold in the name of Jesus. We expel every satanic attachment to my life in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, I am cleansed and made new. We declare that every evil growth in my life be uprooted by fire in the name of Jesus. Let the blood, the fire, and living water of the Most High God wash my ecosystem so that growth can take place. And cleanse my bloodline of every unprofitable growth, stagnation, boredom, with servanthood, laziness, procrastination, and uncertainty. I bind and render useless every misplaced seed. I will turn any of the things of evil associations I am consciously or unconsciously connected with. I break and sever any inherent covenants and cast them into the deep. I resist every attempt to return back to that of old. I bind the resistance to breakthrough and freedom. I can and will be free. I declare that every open gate to the enemy be closed off now through the blood of Jesus. I refuse to offer unacceptable seed. I will not live a star part life. I refuse to reap any evil harvest, therefore I do not plant evil seeds. Every evil preparation, plot, scheme, plan be broken off my life now in the name of Jesus. I have access to what heaven says I can have and anything other than that is brought to naught in the name of Jesus. I have the ability to claim what is mine, my birthright, and my inheritance through the uh, blood of Jesus. I am who God says that I am and anything less than that I will not participate in. My seed is blessed, my seed seed is blessed, and it falls on good ground every time I cast my net. I thank you that I am a soul winner because you said that he that wins souls is why, so I thank you for wisdom that I did not even have to ask for. I thank you for an inheritance that I do not deserve, but because you love me so much, you graciously give to me. I thank you that you help me to realize what tools are needed for me to prosper, and you give them to me freely. I thank you for the word that is soil that can be planted and trusted because you are the great gardener. I thank you that you break every curse off of my life, off of my bloodline and my DNA because you love me so much and you're such a great father. I thank you for my inheritance that is not going to come when I am gone, but I will see before I leave this earth. I thank you that my children
children are blessed in their going and in their coming. I thank you that my parents are blessed and they are released from every stronghold that has tried to keep them from their inheritance. I thank you now that we shall see the goodness of God, not once we are gone from heaven's seat, but from earth's side. I thank you now for being such a good father and for listening and hearing and bringing to pass what your word said that I can have. In your name, amen. amen.